In today's world of IT, AI has made remarkable progress. There's AI for practically everything. You can create music through AI. You can edit videos through AI. So why not use the power of AI for DevOps work? Now, it is possible with QVR AI, the chat GPT for DevOps, and this video is sponsored. QV is a valuable AI tool for your DevOps task that can assist you with tasks on AWS, Kubernetes, GitHub, Jira, and more. Using QBR AI is straightforward. Just add the QV application to your Slack workspace, integrate it with AWS or Kubernetes, and tell it what to do. Let's try this out in action by giving this AI tool some DevOps task. All right, so I'm here on my computer screen. And before we start using QBR AI for our DevOps task, we first need to integrate it with our Slack application. You can see this is the step to install QBR on Slack. You simply need to go to QBR AI and here you will have an option which says add QB to your Slack. If I click on this, a page will appear which will let me choose the different workspace that I have. So I need to install QBR on my CloudChamp workspace. You can see this is the workspace here. Right now I don't have QB app installed and I'm going to allow to install this QB app so we can start using QBR for our DevOps task. You can see success QB has installed. Let's click on this option here and you will be able to see that QB has installed. Once you install QB on your Slack, you get all these details and you can now connect to AWS or Kubernetes or GitHub. You also have management console if you want to use the management interface rather than using the uh, Slack. You can connect to AWS either through this management interface or through Slack. So this is QBR's management dashboard where you can create connections to your AWS or Kubernetes or Jenkins right through the management dashboard. Alternatively, you can also do it through the Slack workspace. If you can read this, it says use this manage command for connecting or disconnecting to different integrations. So if I do manage here, here are some of the options you can do. Let's connect with AWS here. If you click on connect with AWS, you need to enter your account ID, the role name and region. Account ID will be something that you get from the management console, which is here. So I'm going to put my account ID. Then you need to put a role. So QBA uses role to get access to AWS services. If you want to work on S3 using QBA, make sure the role has S3 access. Similarly, if you want to work on EC2, make sure the role has EC2 access. As of now, I already have a role created, which has admin access for this demo. So let me attach that role and show you how QB works. If you face issues with AWS integration, you can read through this documentation, which explains how you can integrate AWS of, and how you can create a role and attach it, uh, policy, attach policies to it and everything in this particular documentation. So this is the role that I created and I'm going to use this role. Uh, so let's put the name of the role here, QBIX AWS, and I'll put that in this. For region, I'm using US-East-1. I can also do the same thing through management in interface if I want to. So if I click on AWS, I need to put my account ID, I need to put my ARN, and I need to put my region. So I'm showing you the Slack way. If you're not able to access this interface, you can do it by running slash manage command, and you can click on connect with AWS, put your details, and click on connect now. Okay, it gave you a message saying connected to AWS and the setup has been done. Now we can give some commands to QBI AI to do some things in our AWS. I'll ask QB to get me all users which do not have MFA activated in my AWS account. Let's see if QB is able to get this done or not. So you can see a brain symbol here, which means QB has taken your request and it's now working on it you will see a message saying AWS operation in progress, bear with me. You can see it's querying to the AWS and very soon you will have a list of all the users who don't have MFA activated. So these are the list of users who don't have MFA activated. There's Kingsley, Chris, John, Syria. To confirm, let me show you. So I'm here in my AWS account. Let's go to IAM. So, and let's go to users. So these are all the different users and you can see MFA option here. Uh, these are all the users who don't have MFA activated. So if you see the name, this user is also here, Akif Python, which do not have MFA activated. And I can show you that here. So MFA is not activated. Similarly, next user, which is Kingsley, is also here, which do not have MFA activated. So rather than you going and searching manually, you can simply ask that 
to an AI tool like Cubia and get your results very soon. Let's ask Cubia to create VPC for us. So I'll say Cubia, please create a VPC with CIDR range 10 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0 slash 16 in US dash East dash 2 region. Let's see if QB is able to do that for us or not. So now you can see a brain symbol, which means QB has started working on it. But soon you will see a message saying navigating through AWS to cater to your needs. So it has started. Sure, I can help you with that. However, I need to confirm if you need to enable DNS. Can you provide this information? Yes, please go ahead and yes, enable. So it has taken up our request and now it's going to create VPC for us with DNS host names and DNS resolution enabled. See, so you can see QB has created a VPC for us in US East 2 region. And if I show you that in console, this is the VPC that is created right now by QB. You can see all the information here. The VPC ID for this is 7966 and this is 7966. Uh, more information can be seen here. And this is how you can use QB to create resources in AWS. There are many people who don't know how to create VPCs and they can use AI like this to increase their productivity. And rather than you going through the console, clicking on buttons, they can simply use QB AI to create resources. Not just this, you can also try out any other operations. Let's try to list EC2 instances, uh, US West 2, 2. Once, if I show you in US West 2, I do have an instance running with the name as GitLab course and ID as 1A2. So it's working on it to get the information and you can see an instance uh, is found which has this ID, it's T2 micro, it's in running state, it was launched this time. Let's see if QB can delete that for us or not. So I'll say QB Junior, please terminate the instance with ID So QB has taken up our request and now very soon it will go ahead and terminate the instance. It says engaging with AWS now, stay with me. So you can see it says operation completed successfully and it is terminating this instance. If I go back to my AWS and refresh, let's see. And you can see the instance has been gone. If I remove this, you can see it's shutting down. So this is amazing, right? Oh yeah, you can do all operations in AWS without actually going to the console. I think this is very amazing and you should try it out. Now let's see what can we do with Cubia in GitHub. So I'm going to go ahead and click connect my GitHub account with Cubia. So let's do that and say install GitHub. And I'll click on install option here with the password. And now Cubia is installed. So we can go ahead and start running queries on Cubia to do operations on GitHub. All right, you can see now GitHub has been connected with our Cubia AI. This means we can perform operations on our GitHub by giving instructions to the QB AI. Let me show you an example. So I'm here in my Slack. I'm going to ask QB to list all the repositories in my in my GitHub. So I'll say QB, please list all public repository in my account. Let's see if QB can do it for us or not. So you can see a brain symbol, which means it has started working. And we got a reply saying GitHub search in progress, please wait. So let's wait for QB to get fetch all the repositories. And with QB, you can not just list, but you can also create new repositories. You can get pull requests, you can trigger a job, or you can also get the build status. So it's asking you, please provide the name of your GitHub account. Let me give the name. You can see it says working on it. Very soon we will have operation successful and here's uh, the list of all the repositories that are public. So you can see uh, React Weather application, K8 voting application, Cloud Native monitoring app, Simple Web app, Simple Terraform project. And all these are all the repositories that we have. You can see microservices, Python app, DevSecOps project, Tetris game, CICD demo. So using uh, QBI AI, you can now perform operations in GitHub too. Let's ask QB to create a new repositories and let's see if it can do it for us or not. Let's see if QB can create a repo for us on GitHub or not. So QB has taken up a request. And it says GitHub operation in progress, bear with me. 
So you can see it says, sure, I can help you just to confirm you want to create a public repo. Name this with this description. I'm sure so I'll say yes. So it's working on it. And it says operation successful. You can see it says successfully executed GitHub. Here is the output. This is the repository URL that it created. Let me show you on my account here. So I'll refresh and we should be able to see that repo. So this is the repo which is created by AI. So you now understood the power of AI. Using QB, you can perform operations in AWS. And also GitHub, we have created a repository using GitHub. Let's see what else it can do. So I'm going to ask QB AI to list me all the PR or pull request in a particular repo. So let's see if it can do that for us or not. This would make DevOps job very easy if you can pull a request, if you can also accept merge requests and other things. So let's say, please get all the pull request. So we're asking us it to get the pull request. If I show you, this is the repo I'm talking about. This is the repo. In this repo, we do have a pull request. Yeah, we have a pull request for here which is added sign up root. So let's say if QB can fetch that for or not. So you can see it. This is the PR added sign up root PR number is to change file to, and you can also get the link. This is how easy it is to get people request and do operations on GitHub using QB. Not just this, using QB, you can also do more things like triggering a build, getting build status, creating repo, deleting repo, forking repo, or tagging PRs, assigning PR, and a lot more. Now let's check out what else QBI AI can do on applications like Jira and Kubernetes. Starting with Jira, I'm going to ask QBI to list all Jira tasks that are planned for Sprint. So I'll say, QB, please list all the tasks for project DevOps that are planned Let's just ask it for to list all the projects in list all the tasks in this project DevOps. So you can see QB has taken up our request. Very soon we will have list of all the tasks in this particular project. It says Jira search is in progress. Please wait. So you can see list of all the tasks that is there in this project uh, DevOps. So these are all the last list of tasks. Now let's make this more interesting and see what can we do in Kubernetes using QBI AI. So I'm going to ask QBI to list all the pods present in a particular namespace. Let's see if QB can find it for us or not. So we have asked QB to list all the pods in OpenFast namespace. Let's see if QB can do that for us or not. So QB has taken up our request. So you can see here are different pods that are present in the OpenFast namespace. This is Alert Manager in OpenFast, then Gateway in OpenFast, NADS, Prometheus, Q Worker, all these are from OpenFast namespace. So this is how you can get all the pods in a particular namespace. Let's go more in depth. So let's go and get the logs for this alert manager deployment. I'm going to ask QBR to, to give me logs for this. So I'm asking QB to get the deployment logs for alert manager under this namespace, which is OpenFast. Once I press enter, it's going to start working. Very soon it will give you the logs for this deployment which is alert manager under the namespace OpenFast. Oh yeah, this is amazing. The here are the logs for alert manager deployment in OpenFast namespace. You can see the timestamp as well as the log level, which is info log and also the message. So this is how easy it is to get information from Kubernetes cluster, from Jira, from AWS, from GitHub, all in your Slack using QBI AI. So I will highly recommend you giving out a try. It has a huge potential. And this might be something you might use in future. So it's better if you learn how to operate AI like this in your DevOps workflow. After watching this demo, I'm sure you now know the power of AI and how easy it is to do DevOps tasks using QBI AI. Using QB, you can trigger and query actions in AWS on services like ECR, EKS, SQS, EC2, IAM, and a lot more. Along with this, we also perform operations on GitHub where we created new repositories where we also fetch the pull request. So using QB, you can form different tasks in GitHub, including getting pull requests, assigning pull requests, uh, triggering a job, getting the job status, and a lot more. We also saw how you can use QB for Jira integration. We, we, also, we also saw how you can use QB with Jira to get Jira tickets and also the status of current sprint. 
Along with this, you can use QB with other tools like Kubernetes, Confluence, Jenkins. In Kubernetes, we try to get all the pods in a particular namespace and also got the logs for them. But apart from this, you can do more using QB. You can create deployments, change images, scale in, scale out. Also get pod status without SSH. So these are all the different things you can do with QB. But that's not all. You can also set up QB with your own custom connections to homegrown systems or customize or templatize your experience to certain users. And all the actions are performed with the identity of the user, so authorization is guaranteed. If you want to check out more about custom connections, you can check out the blog. The link is going to be in the description. Now, most of you might be thinking, QB is great and it can help me with my DevOps tasks, but is it really secure? So to answer this, QB is created on four different elements and all of these are in private subnet. So it's very, very secure and you can also use this in production if you want to. So that's QBR, AI for DevOps and your personal 24 by 7 assistant. Give it a try. The link is in description. Thanks and have a great day.